Christopher for me, who is Ellen Hamilton. Um, question for Chris. In terms of information sharing, I know that the uh, energy sector is pretty far ahead and doing a really good job in sharing horizontally across the industry and also within government. What do you think uh, could be improved in what process within the sector? Yeah, I really want to stay away from I really want to stay away from you know, sector generalization. Everybody's a little bit different how they handle that. But from from an energy perspective, information sharing is important. It's important um, that we are sharing information with our, with our peers, um, and we are participating in information sharing uh, op opportunities that are already out there that exist. There are a number of participation. Um, opportunities that we've um, taken advantage of with DHS, we participate in, uh, they have an ESIP program, they have a control systems security evaluation uh, team that come that will come down and look at your uh, your program and evaluate against some metrics and, and industry standards. Um, we've been able to participate in the intelligence community uh, briefings at the classified level, and um, you know we're. Uh, a very close coordination with our, our regulator, the ESI SAC, EDI. So information sharing is very important. And the most important fundamental of information sharing is what you do with that information once you get it. If, if you get classified information, what does the back end system look like behind that information that's going to evaluate the threat, uh, determine what systems are impacted, how many systems, where they located, and uh, how fast you can you can act on that information. So our focus not only is to, to look outward to, to gain knowledge and, and information sharing, um, but is to look at our back end process. You know, how quickly can we respond to threats from the US CERT and something a peer may may tell us or, or something we detect ourselves. It's the, the back end has to run like a well oiled machine and has you have to know your environment very, very well in order for any kind of information sharing to be effective. I just want to pick up on that point, and uh, Tom, you have, you have to go on in a minute here. There are great examples of uh, information sharing between the public and private sector, and there are places where we could do much better. Your job on a daily basis is to look at the threat, look at how it continues to evolve and mutate. Where do you see the need right now for better information sharing? And what do you see as some some of the vehicles, if you will, to do that. Very, very good. You know, um, I just have to leave a little early. I get to be transformed from someone who gets to speak to someone who does some staff work for someone who's senior to me, so I've got to start doing that at five. Uh, but in any case, um, it's a great question. Uh, we see a, a lot of successful information sharing in place today across the board. One of the objectives of the Rogers Ruppersberger bill, though, is to, in many ways, put in place the right authorities that, at least for our industry, will help us really drive uh, real-time information sharing, whereby we can share our data sets that we see in the private sector with the data sets that the government sees, and then uh, the goal is to put in place the right technical measures to scrub the sources and methods that the IC sees, and then, if you do that and do it well, you can uh, reduce the time that the uh, perpetrators of the threats have the ability to deem your systems. You know, it's all about IDing the unknown malware early and reacting you know, within 24 hours or hopefully less or not at all. So I think there's great scope for this real-time information sharing regime where you really executing machine-to-machine -machine capabilities to improve the uh, ability of the country to protect itself. I have a question on supply chain logistics, but I'm going to give the audience another opportunity here to ask any and all. Please. Philosophical question. My oh, name is thank you. Bradley Rotter, uh, Air Patrol Corporation. Many of us in the battle of cyber are sort of resigned to the fact that this may be the first war in history that can't be won. I'd be very interested in the uh, opinion of your, your panelists. Is it possible, will the pieces be put together in such a fashion that this war can be won and this problem put a set aside? So I'm going to go down the panel here. Frank, fire away. 
because everyone has a perspective based on the industry that they're in right now. Yikes. Wow. Um, so, my initial reaction, I, I think all of us that are here will, will need that it impact anyone. It's, it's a clearly need for, for total collaboration um, in industry, government, academia, and all of us looking at it from a, from a comprehensive getting our hounds around the, the whole problem space. I, I think when you look at the resources of, of what we've done in our history, there hasn't been anything where we said, ooh, that looks hard, let's not do that. So, you know, back to the 50s, if you want to walk on the moon type thing, right? So at the end of the day, there's, there's nothing that daunting as, as much as getting the mind share and resources all pulling in the same direction. Um, I, I, I think, I, I certainly hope that within X number of years, we will have information exchange sharing back to simplified like watching TV and talking on your telephone. Um, is that a reality? I'm not sure, but I, I do believe that in my heart, that's where we're headed, and that's if we collaborate, that we'll, we'll get there. It's really a good question, by the way, and I know your, your firm pretty well. Um, I guess it really, I answer your question with the question, how do you define winning? Uh, just like with business, how do you define success? You, know, you may miss a financial metric by a tenth of a point, and you may not be considered successful. But it's really, how, how do you define winning? I think one of the metrics was mentioned earlier about intellectual property loss, a trillion dollars, which is absolutely huge. And think what that really does to a growing trade imbalance, right? Um, you know, the, the issue that, that we as a country, one of the issues that we're faced with is that many other nation states, it's perfectly legal to do what they're doing and the government may endorse it and embrace it. So, it really gets back to the question, how do we define winning? Is the reduction in intellectual property loss every year? Is it a reduction in financial loss by, by criminals? To your point about actuarial data earlier, Frank, which I totally agree with, by the way, it, um, you know, cyber is still kind of a new and emerging industry when you think about it. And one thing we are faced with still today is we don't have significant actuarial data to help us make effective decisions. Frank, you were talking about prioritization based on a risk model. How do I define ROSI, right? Return on security investment. I need more actuarial data. How did I reduce my probability of getting hacked? Based on that, what's the typical loss per incident? So based on my security investment, I have some appreciation for what that return is that allows the leaders of any organization, whether it's a government entity or a company, to rationalize their decisions. But, sorry to dwell on this, but really, I'd answer with the question, how do we define winning? And that's something for our nation to undertake, quite frankly. It's a, it's a difficult question to answer. From a, a financial sector perspective, uh, criminal, criminal activity and fraud, um, frankly, they don't go away. And, uh, and how criminals conduct their activities, um, you know, they, they change. Uh, we as a society do not tolerate uh, bank robberies um, in the traditional sense. And uh, the conviction rate is equal to uh, the task, it's very high. Um, in the cyber world, we're just beginning the, the, the journey on how we're going to handle that as a society and how we're going to handle that as a global society. Um, and I think that uh, there is a need for uh, in increased uh, uh, international cooperation and improvements in the criminal code and uh, criminal penalties. So I, I, I think that the, this is really needs to really need to take a look at uh, this, this is a criminal activity and it's fraud. And, and beyond that, you know, we, we need to be able to be able to identify and prosecute. 